In order to be seen as worthy within a predator clan, young Yaucha, in an adolescent stage equivalent to human teenage years, must complete a special ritual to become blooded hunters. This requires the hunting and killing of xenomorphs and the blooding ritual to follow, where the Yaucha marks itself using the acidic blood of its trophy. This ritual is depicted in the film Alien vs. Predator, taking place in 2004, in an ancient Yaucha pyramid buried 2,000 feet deep beneath the Antarctic snow outside the Razorback whaling station on Bovatoya Island. Three young blood predators, Scar, Celtic, and Chopper, travel to Earth in order to take part in this ritual. All of the elements were in place to instigate the hunt once the heat signature from the pyramid garnered the attention of Wayland Industries. This promptly led to the expedition sent to investigate the pyramid and a plentiful helping of human hosts for the serpents that would be hunted. Inspired by the concept introduced in the first Alien vs. Predator comic, Prey, the key elements to this hunting ritual would be the Yaucha utilizing a captive xenomorph queen, who, chained and helpless, lays her eggs as needed for the Yaucha's hunting purposes. The queen on Bovatoya Island was chained and frozen deep within the pyramid for an unknown number of years, only to be brought back from her hibernation once the hunting ritual was initiated. In agony, the queen began laying her eggs, which were fed into the sacrificial chamber meant for potential hosts. Wayland's expedition certainly provided hosts, and soon the ultimate prey was born and somewhere deep within the pyramid to hunt. Given the technology available to the Yaucha that surveils, maps out, and reads life forms within the pyramid, it's reasonable to assume that at all times the young predators were being monitored by their elders, and their progress during the hunt was being tracked. Presumably the elders would be waiting in the Yaucha ship and ready to retrieve the surviving, newly blooded hunters to complete the ritual. Likely a sacred piece of weaponry would have been presented to the newly blooded, though in this case there were no surviving Yaucha. The trio's hunt was going as planned until the surviving humans from Wayland's expedition stole the plasma casters intended for their use. Then there were further, more severe hindrances that fell upon the hunt. In their first encounters with the grown xenomorphs, both Chopper and Celtic were killed in their fights. The Alpha Alien, otherwise known as Grid, defeated each of the Youngbloods, puncturing their skulls with its inner jaw. This left Scar, the lone survivor of his hunt, and led to his reluctant alliance with the lone survivor of the human species within the pyramid, Alexa Woods. Both Scar and Lex would survive the events within the pyramid on Bovatoya Island and would emerge as blooded hunters. As a sign of respect to his human allies, Scar performed the blooding ritual on Lex, using the burning, scarring blood from a torn alien digit. Both Scar and Lex were given the mark, described as meant to resemble a thunderbolt. The Alien vs. Predator novelization describes this moment, and the reverence of the hunt shared between the two species. When Scar opened his fingers, Lex saw the grisly thing he held, a severed alien digit still oozing acid blood. He held the bloody thing in front of her face, and shocked awareness dawned in Lex's eyes. She nearly recoiled from it, and what Scar wanted to do with it. But in the end, Lex decided to accept the honor. She'd earned it, and after all, this final pain would pale in comparison to what she'd already been through. As the caustic chemical burned her flesh, Lex winced, but uttered no sound. The pain seemed endless as the predator carefully traced the distinctive thunderbolt scar on her forehead. For a brief moment, human and humanoid stood facing one another in the vast polar expanse, sharing ritual that was already ancient when mankind was still living in caves and hunting woolly mammoths with fire-hardened spears and stone axes. The alien hunter most definitely bestowed a unique honor onto Lex. The only other human to receive the blooded rank from a Yaucha tribe would be Machiko Noguchi, also from the comic Alien vs. Predator Prey, which contributed inspiration to the story of the 2004 film. The mark itself bears not just significance for the hunt, but also holds a kind of religious significance as well. The novelization of AVP goes into some further detail when it comes to the religious roots of their hunt, suggesting a belief in ancient Yaucha similar to the gods from Norse mythology. This comparison is explicitly made in the novelization. Before the beginning of the hunt, the novel describes the following. After they had all completed their preparations for the hunt, the predators filed into a small ritual chamber and knelt in supplication before a mammoth, intricately carved stone effigy of a fierce warrior god a deity who hurled thunderbolts as weapons like some mighty extraterrestrial Odin. The novel also briefly describes a funeral being held for Scar when the hunt is over and his body is brought back to the ship. His kin had laid him in a place of honor, at the base of the statue of their savage thunder god. 
though ultimately impaled and killed by the Alien Queen's tail, Scar died a blooded hunter. Unfortunately, it would be partaking in the blooding aspect of the ritual that would lead to the birth of the vicious Predalien version of the Xenomorph, which appears at the end of the film and, of course, the entirety of the sequel, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. In preparing for his blooding, Scar, of course, had to remove his biomask so that he could give himself the Mark of Honor. This left him vulnerable to the facehugger that would attack and impregnate him. In the case of the Rite of Passage ritual undertaken by Scar, Chopper, and Celtic, the biggest hindrance came from the non-host humans taking the plasma casters. Upon realizing this, the human hunter Sebastian stresses the severity of this move in the novel version, saying, This pyramid, it's like a prison. We took the guards' guns, and now the prisoners are running free. Had all three Predators received their plasma caster weapons in the sacrificial chamber and had access to them when first encountering the aliens, do you think this would have been a more successful hunt? Would all three Predators have survived and become blooded? Or does the weapon not the hunter make? Comment below and share your thoughts. And as always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like. And you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. A very, very special thanks goes out to Wayland Yutani Executives, Emurik, and Lady Anne. They're part of our Patreon Hive. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. Finally, in the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.